Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and as you can see, I've gone on holiday by mistake. Another man who thought he was getting a relaxing time away was my good friend and sometimes collaborator, Ben Harvey. Now, Ben said to me the other day, he said, Gordon, I'm after a new 24 to 105 millimeter zoom for my Canon EOS R full frame mirrorless camera. Yes, this is the kind of conversation that Ben and I have. He said, I know you've reviewed all four of them because Canon does make four models. Um, this isn't now the conversation I'm having with Ben, I'm talking to you here. There are two EF models uh, designed for DSLRs, but which you can adapt to mirrorless cameras. And he in fact has one of those, the EF 24 to 105 F4L. That was the better of those two models. But Canon also makes two native RF versions that only work on the EOS R mirrorless cameras. And he was trying to decide which one of those to buy. So he was asking me, which one should I get? And I thought to myself, look, I could either give him the direct answer to this, the, the, the opinion that I formed having tested them both, compared them closely together. And again, if you're interested in that, I've got a separate review of it here on YouTube and reviews of all four 24 to 105s at cameralabs.com. So I thought I could either tell him what I've discovered or I could potentially spoil his holiday by getting hold of both models as uh, loaners from Canon, sending him off with them and uh, well, really kind of hoping that he would film everything he could think of using both lenses and uh, come up with his own opinion uh, and hopefully put together a, a video for us. So that's what I did. And this is Ben's story where he gets to go away with two Canon RF 24 to 105 millimeter lenses, but only one will end up in his kit bag. Which one do you think it will be? Over to you, Ben. Hi everybody, welcome to the video. If you're not familiar with my face, I am Ben Harvey. I'm a friend of Gordon's and from time to time, I review cameras, lenses and accessories for his channel. Today we're looking at Canon's family of 24 to 105 lenses. On the left hand side, you've got the EF 24 to 105 F4L, which is EF mount for DSLRs. In the middle, you've got the RF 24-105 f4L, and on the right-hand side, you've got the 24-105 f4 to 7.1, which is not an L. Now, I'm gonna put some statistics up on each of these lenses, the weight and the cost, um, but roughly, this is a 13-year-old lens, so it's not too expensive anymore, and the L-series lens is about twice the price of the floating aperture of the f4 to 7.1. Take into consideration, if you use the EF on a mirrorless camera, you're gonna to have to have the adapter as well, which adds cost and weight. Now to make sure I'm getting the most out of both of these lenses, Canon have supplied them with an R6 so that you're gonna get the best focusing and the best video capabilities. So at the moment, I've got a staycation. I am in Norfolk visiting some family, I'm going to the circus later, so that should be a good test of these two lenses. I'm going to take plenty of photographs. I'm near the seafront here, so I'm going to do some landscape photography, a bit of vlogging, and uh, just gonna get a general feel for these. My needs, or whichever lens I do end up buying, is for both video and photography. So I'm looking for quiet autofocus, good stabilization, and obviously good image quality. So yeah, they're getting a good use. I'm forcing myself to use only these two lenses for the next week. Okay, I think that's enough talking. Let's use these lenses. Right, so I've come down to the beach with my family to take some pictures and create some video of my children as you do. My wife said to me, what, you've only brought one camera and one lens, which is unusual for me. And I said, yeah, that's the whole point of having this walk around lens, the 24 to 105, it should be able to do everything. So out of the two lenses, I brought out what I'll call the kit lens. So not the F4L version. I brought out the F4 to the 7.1 quite simply because the sun is out. There's no need to be shooting wide open. So uh, that is the decision that I made and it's considerably lighter. So what I've noticed between the two lenses, there are two physical differences. First of all, uh, when it comes to shooting landscapes, the kit lens doesn't have a manual focus, autofocus switch on the lens. So when I shoot landscapes, I tend to shoot in manual focus and you're gonna to have to delve into the menus in order to override that. Now the second difference is I shoot manual when it comes to photographs. So I set my shutter speed, aperture and ISO. I nail the exposure and then I just leave it all alone. Um, but because this lens changes aperture as you zoom in, that doesn't work for my workflow. So you're gonna to have to change that to using auto ISO, aperture priority or one of the other automatic modes. So I'd say that's a downside to using the kit lens versus the F4, which stays at F4 regardless of whether you zoom in. 
If you want to see what that looks like side by side, then here we have two images taken one meter away from the subject, both are 105 millimeters. On the left, we have the f4 lens at f4, and on the right hand side, we have the kit lens at its maximum aperture of f7.1. Both create nice sharp images, but if you're looking for less distracting backgrounds, then the f4 is more pleasing in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. After the beach, we headed to the circus, and the moment I walked into the tent, I knew that I was in for some challenging lighting conditions. I didn't have front row tickets, and pretty much shot exclusively at 105 millimeters. The first half of the show, I used the f4 lens, and the second half, the kit lens, both on the Canon R6. Both lenses handle focusing really well, stabilization was great at 105 millimeters, but there was no denying that shooting at f7.1 in these dark conditions was challenging. To give you an idea of the light levels, at f4 and a reasonable shutter speed of 320th of a second, I was at ISO 4000 with the f4 lens, which the R6 handles just fine. However, at almost two stops slower, the kit lens would require an ISO of 16,000, which is not ideal. This might be an extreme situation, but this is just how my week panned out. Next on the to-do list, boating on the Norfolk Broads. My family and I have just got back from a boat trip on the Norfolk Broads, my father-in-law's boat. And we have been rained on quite a lot over the last four or five days. It's spitting now, so it's probably a good time to mention that the kit lens that I brought out with me today does not have weather sealing, because when I've been out with this camera and this lens, I've been stuffing it underneath my hoodie to keep it away from the rain, just in case. At least if you buy the F4L version, you've got the reassurance that it's gonna withstand a bit of rain. Kit lens, not entirely sure but going out on a boat was a good test of the stabilization. The kit lens did very well indeed. The other thing I was really, really hoping that whichever of these lenses I choose, it was going to become my new vlogging lens for my YouTube videos, but unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen. 24 mil is not quite wide enough. At the moment, I've got the camera and the 24 to 105 on a mini tripod. If I take this off, I've taken it off the mini tripod and that is my arm at full reach. So it's doable and I've literally, this is the only, the 24 to 105, they are the only two lenses that I brought out with me. That's at full arm's reach. If you're kind of a bit more casual about it, I think it's a bit too intimate to be making YouTube videos. But if you're more than happy not to have a really wide shot, then 24 mil full frame, you get stabilization. So it's possible to walk and talk. And at the moment, because the sun is out, Right now, as you can see, the kit lens is doing an amazing job. Some other benefits of using native RF lenses, which can often be overlooked, is that you're getting the addition of a control ring, which I like to program for ISO. But you could set that for shutter speed, aperture, or other preferences. For video, an RF lens will also allow you to make one eighth adjustments to the aperture blades. And for photography, you're going to get the benefit of a distance scale for manual focus. I couldn't find the exact specification online, but with cameras like the R6 and the R5 being capable of high burst rates for photographs, around 20 photographs per second, some older lenses will be limited when compared to the newer technology in the RF lenses. Now let's see how these lenses perform for landscape photography. I've been walking and talking for two minutes now and the 24-105 f4L is already starting to hurt my arm so I'm going to put it down and then we're going to go and shoot some landscapes. But my intention for when I get down to the beach is to be comparing all three of these lenses at their best optical performance, say f8 or f11, same settings and I'm looking for kind of good quality sharpness tests in the center at the edge 24 mil 50 mil 105 mil and see how all they compare now the sea defenses that I came to photograph here at Caister on sea uh, I came here five years ago and there was some beautiful metal zigzag sea defenses however 2021 coastal erosion has taken them away so I'm gonna have to settle for photographing the sea the seascape and the wind farm I just saw a seal. Just saw a seal. Well, 
well, I'm not from around here, I don't know if you normally get seals in the sea, but that is literally a few meters off the beach. A seal, sweet. That was a bonus, I was not expecting that. Anyway, we're here to take some photographs. First up is 24 millimeters. All three lenses were mounted on the Canon R6. All examples are from the center of the frame at F8 and ISO 100. From left to right, you have the EF, then the RF kit lens, and finally the RF F4L. At 100%, other than the slight shift in color rendering, it's difficult to see any difference between these three images. Zooming into 300% again reveals very little difference between these three lenses that we have on test here. At 50 millimeters, the images start to look a bit sharper, even at 100%. Cropping into 300% shows very similar results, but if I had to pick one, I would say that the kit lens holds a bit more detail at the base of the turbines. At 105 millimeters, all three lenses perform really well, but the kit lens starts to fall behind and the RF F4 takes the lead, closely followed by the 16 year old EF lens. Not completely satisfied that I was getting the best out of the lenses at 24 millimeters, I focused on a close up subject. This time the image is taken from the side of the frame. I manually focus on all of the images by zooming in to 10 times magnification, but the results were still a little bit disappointing. The subject is a bit soft and the pebbles on the beach at the bottom of the frame were still a bit distorted. Then I wondered if I was mistaking lens softness with resolution, so I took the same photographs again with my EOS R, which pushed the resolution up from 20 to 30 megapixels, but the results were still a bit disappointing. Gordon and I cross reference the serial numbers on the two lenses that he originally tested and we can confirm that these are not the same lenses that we are comparing here against the EF lens. I did one more test using the RF F4L lens. The lens that you would expect to perform the best out of all three that we have here. This time with lots of detail in the frame and if we crop into the center of the image which was shot at 24 millimeters, we get okay levels of sharpness. But not what you would expect from an L series lens. Zoom the lens into 50mm and you get the detail back, likewise at 105mm. So based upon the lenses that Gordon and I have both tested, they don't seem to perform amazingly at 24mm and there is very little difference between the kit lens and the L-series lenses. Now this was a really interesting experiment I think because you would expect a lens, the EF version, that was created in 2005 to be well outperformed by Canon's latest 24 to 105s. But as you can see from the side by sides, optically all three of these lenses are very, very close. So don't choose one of these lenses based upon optical quality because it's irrelevant. Now, if you've got a DSLR and you're sticking with the DSLR, then the F will do just fine. I don't think you really have a choice anyway. You can't adapt RF lenses to a DSLR. If you're going mirrorless or you already have a mirrorless camera, don't get the EF version. That's a bad investment in 2021. You should be buying one of these native lenses for your Canon. Right, now the EF version out of the frame, we've got the F4 to 7.1 and we've got the F4. I've been shooting with both of these lenses for over a week now. As you've seen, loads of different scenarios and that's a typical week for me. I've got portraits of my kids indoors, outdoors. I've been shooting some landscapes. I went on a boat, shooting movies. I went to a circus a whole range of different scenarios. And if I were to summarize which lens I reached for in low light situations, I went for the F4, obviously. If I was shooting outdoors, I was taking the kit lens because it's considerably lighter. It's as simple as that. In the knowledge that the optical quality is almost identical on the both of these, if you're going out in good lighting conditions, you just take the kit lens. But that's because I had the luxury of having both of these lenses at the same time. Now, if you have to buy one of these, quite simply, if you don't ever shoot in low light situations, buy the kit lens. You're not missing out on optical quality. For some reason, I, was ex I wasn't expecting the results to be like this, but this absolutely ties up with Gordon's tests as well. I've always spent my money on the L series lens on the idea that I was going to get better optical quality, but for some reason, you're getting more for your money with this kit lens. If you do shoot low light situations, then the kit lens starts to fall apart at the long end being 7.1. Even F4 is not a very fast aperture for shooting portraits indoors. Also, if you're shooting portraits outdoors at 105 millimeters, F4, in my opinion, is still much better than F7.1. You can see the background slightly softer, less distracting. So even if you shoot portraits in good lighting conditions, you should get the F4. But it's worth noting that the F4 does everything that the kit lens does, but you're paying for that in weight and cost. 
If you're planning on getting one of these lenses for video, both of these have excellent stabilization, no complaints there, very silent focusing, very quick focusing, especially when it's paired with the R6, which is filming me right now. And I quite honestly say you'd be happy with both of these, but if you're shooting in good lighting conditions, again, get the kit lens. If you're shooting yourself in a vlog style, at 24 mil, both of these are F4, so there's no need to carry around this heavy, expensive lens if you're just filming yourself the whole time. If you do intend on using either of these lenses for vlogging, then take into consideration if you put it on an R6 or an R5, the stabilization options become a bit limited. You've got to have stabilization on the IBIS, which is the sensor stabilization, and the lens both on or both off. However, if you've got an EOS R like me, then I can just benefit from optical stabilization. Therefore, you don't have to worry about these wobbly edges when you're using a wide angle lens. And I didn't think I would witness that at 24 mil, but you definitely do. Other than that, the L series has got weather sealing and it's got one extra switch, which goes from autofocus to manual focus, which saves you diving into the menus if you buy the kit lens where it's missing. So which of these lenses am I going to get? Well, this week is pretty typical for my shooting style. I've shot a whole variety of images and I do shoot a lot in low light. So I'm going to have to buy the F4 lens because I would feel like it's a massive compromise to have to shoot at 7.1 at 105 millimeters. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're wondering which of these lenses to get, hopefully you've now got the answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Gordon's channel and I'll see you in the next video.